the boat today. <clears throat> I'm down at the boat today, and I got to get some stuff prepared. Timmy, I am pulling the port side transmission out of the boat. I know it sounds like a major deal and a major catastrophe, but it um, what it is is a uh, a leaking a leaking seal. It was leaking when I got the boat three years ago. Uh, they replaced they replaced the um, the cooler because it had some had some water in it. Because uh, when I first went and bought the boat, the um, and the uh, transmission fluid in the one in that port side was uh, pink or cloudy or um, milky. So. Before I bought the boat, they uh, said that they would change it and uh, make sure that everything's fine. When I got the boat, everything was great. Uh, still nice and red, but there was some fluid in the on the uh, in the bilge, and I just assumed it was stuff that they spilled or whatever, you know. But uh, it turns out after I cleaned it up and checked everything. It leaked again so after I think the second year third year maybe I was uh, oh boy I gotta get a pair of pliers I was um last year I got in the boat and it was leaking pretty or there was a lot of fluid in there and I checked it and I was down again so I filled it and then two weeks later I checked it and I was down again so I knew I was leaking so I called my buddy Tim, and he's like, yeah, he goes, those seals, you know, the ones closest to the, um, the bottom of the transmission, if the boat had any water in the bilge, uh, they have a tendency to, to rot out, whatever. And when I bought the boat, it was neglected. It was sitting in a, in a slip for a while, no power to it. There was water in the bilge, not a lot. I mean, it was, you know, a few inches, definitely to the bottom of the transmission. But um, so I imagine that's what happened. So what I'm going to do today is pull out the transmission. Well, I'm going to get ready to pull out the transmission. I don't think I'm going to do it. I think Timmy is going to do it. But I'm going to get ready to do it. Uh, I bought a bunch of tools the other day. And I know there's a pair of pliers in here. Uh, the truck's a mess because... I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, um, I lost my mom uh, a couple weeks ago, and this is stuff from her her house uh, that I was cleaning out. So, oh yeah, steering wheel too. I forgot that was in here. My God, this is a horrible mess. Alright, I'll get back to you in a minute here. This truck is a mess. All right, well, anyways, what I have to do now is if we go, well, we got to pull the prop shaft. My prop shaft actually goes through the transmission. So I need to, oh, of course it's touching the ground. All right. I might actually have to have this boat lifted. Hang on. No, that'll be enough room.
something to put under this prop because I don't want it slamming against the stone. Right, let's see. I'll be right back. Gotta get a piece of plywood. I was told that these are on backwards. The uh, large knot is supposed to be on the outside and the sh uh, skinny knot is supposed to be on the inside. Uh, I didn't bother Googling it yet or looking at it, but is that, th is that true? Do you need to have the, uh, the thin knot on first? So you want to leave a comment? That'd be wonderful. They've been like this for, uh, I think two years ago, I took the props off um, to, to see what size they are. Because you can't see the size until you pull this nut off because it's written on the face of it. So I pulled the nuts off to look at the size of the thing and I put it right back on the same way it was. So I got no how long these have been on like this. I know these aren't original uh, props, but you know, they put them on wrong or what? But I don't know. that wasn't even tight at all. What happens is when you forward thrust on these wants to forward thrust forward thrust on these wants to push the the props on tighter so when I put these on, I, I tighten them up like crazy but apparently from taking off a bunch of times the prop seated itself even tighter and they probably could have tightened these up a little bit more but you know they weren't they didn't they're not loose. They didn't do anything weird. I don't have a puller with me, but I'm gonna take a couple whacks at it from the back here. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. Crap. That's what I forgot to do. I need to get heat. I like to heat up the hub a little bit with some, um, some uh, propane. And, uh, just to try to expand this a little tiny bit. And then it'll uh, it should pop off. That tightened up. A nice new wheel. Very nice and smooth. I didn't feel any of the major cracks. I got um, 
I got stuff in there. Um, but I didn't, I didn't do the whole dipping the wheel and get that, you know, that real thick glaze over. I just got this spray that I put on it and I like it. It got rid of all the sharp, well, I sand it down, but it got rid of all the sharp old, uh, lacquer on it or whatever it was. And it's nice and smooth. Feels good. So that's that. I just got to tighten that up. And then, uh, I bought a new actuator, um, but I'm nervous because it's different. It's, it's different size. Everything is the same as far as um, the length and how far it goes. That motor's tiny, and this shaft is way skinnier. But it has 3,000 newtons. Is the same. I think mine was. Um, load capacity was 2000 so this one this one is the same or or more it says but i don't know if that's because it's newer and you know 2000 2002 they were just you know bulky and whatever but i don't know i don't know if this will work or not we're gonna see so i'm gonna go get the end off my other one put it on here and then plug this in and see what it does but until then Let's uh, go back and get um, a hammer, maybe, possibly, if I can find one, a puller, and some heat, and I'll get back to you. I went home for a little bit, and I grabbed some map gas and a hammer. I don't know if I'll be able to get this thing off. I mean, it was off two years ago, but I don't know. So I'm just going to heat it a little bit here on the hub. And see if I can just tap on the back here and see if it'll pop off. If it does, great. If not, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'll wait till I get a puller and do it the right way. But we'll do this for now.
hub's barely even hot. Uh, okay, well, give one more whack. Nope, that's not gonna work. Alright, so I need a puller. I need a puller. Probably the next next day, because it took me a while to get this uh, prop puller. I didn't get it till uh, yesterday evening. But before I pull the prop off, I need to loosen the nut on the um, the prop shaft. That's on the uh, end of the transmission. This is the prop puller. Right there. And we're going to go up there and we're going to take out that nut. So I'll get back to you when I get in there. I need to get back in here to get to that nut. <sighs> Not a lot of room, but I will weasel my way in there and we'll take it off. Too dark to see anyways but I got this nut loose and there's a lot of transmission fluid down here things has been leaking out all the way along so if you're looking at this and wondering why is the nut on the back side like this or why is there a nut? Usually it's a, a shaft, a keyed shaft with a dimple in it goes into the coupler and then there's a jam nut that goes onto it. Uh, but these are ZF transmissions and the prop shaft actually goes, runs through the transmission and comes out the back side. There still is a coupler, but it's on backwards. Right there. You can't see it. Take my word for it. We'll get this, get it apart, and I'll show you the parts. Pain that is. It seems like no matter how big the boat is, there just isn't quite enough room to get where you need to go. I have a very hard time bending over, and getting my back underneath this thing, because I can't get right down to the ground because I'm too wide to fit between the, the exhaust. So I have to kind of. Bend my back, get over this, and get over the top of the exhaust to scooch back in there. And joints don't bend like they used to. So it was difficult. And uh, I didn't do it, but here's a, here's a bit of advice for any of you guys that are going to be climbing into your bilges this spring. And there's not a lot of people uh, working. Take your cell phone. Make sure you have your cell phone with you at all times. I didn't. I left it in the truck. Totally my mistake. But luckily, there's a bunch of people here. So if I did get in trouble, I could just yell out. Let's see, there's people driving by. But I've heard horror stories where people get into situations like that and get their body behind something, and then they just can't get out, and then they're stuck like that. And uh, you know, they come, they come in. Uh, two, three weeks later or whatever and find that there's a body frozen in a bilge. So make sure to keep your phone with you or, you know, make sure you tell a loved one or a friend or whatever where you're going to be. Um, so that's it. That's just a little safety tip for today. So let's go outside and, man, there's a lot of, a lot of transmission fluid down there. Let's go outside and get that prop off now. The way that this clamp works is there's a little button on the end of this one that fits in the center of the bottom of the shaft and then the, the jaw fits on the back of the uh, prop and then I'm going to go ahead and just heat this hub up a little bit just to try to expand it a little bit 
and then I'll just start cranking down on this and the prop shaft should pop off oh you know what I did wrong though and I gotta do this I gotta put a nut back on here you don't want to um, have without a nut on here when this pops off it could shoot off really bad so you want to have a nut on the shaft a little bit so that it stops so let me go ahead and pull this off real quick Tighten up here pretty decent like this and then hit it with heat and a lot of times the pressure on it along with the heat it'll just pop off little taps right there popped right off that's a little warm okay you know what I want to do though I'll wait for this to cool down and then I'm gonna use the prop to try to pull the shaft out I have a feeling though I'm gonna get screwed here I might have to might have to have them pick up the boat I don't know if I can get this prop off I'm gonna try to get the prop off first. It should come off because I'm at the taper, so it should tip up a little bit. Back to the bilge. I was talking about um, these props not being the original. I think the original props for this boat were, th were three blade and uh, that rudder has got a little bend to it which reminds me I hope that I can get the uh, I hope I can get the prop shaft out. I have it turned a little bit but is bent towards you know because the the prop or the rudder and the prop shaft are off center just a little bit so that you can squeeze uh, slide the prop shaft out past the rudder my rudder is bent a little bit from the previous owner he must have uh got in shallow water or whatever but um you know i don't know what he did but he bent a brand a rudder or both rudders and both props are new so these props are this is the left hand turn uh, 18 degree 19 pitch um, so I don't know what this needs I was gonna go what was I gonna do because it'll over rev like if you if you get in the gas it, the motor will over rev if you, if you let it so I want either another degree of or no I'm sorry an in, this is an inch 18 inch by 19 degree pitch so I want to do like another degree of pitch. I think I want to do another degree of pitch. So make this an 1820. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I don't know. 
anyways, let's go back in the bilge and see if we can't get the nuts off of the back of the uh, inside coupler. All right, let's go do this. I hate getting back in the bilge. I am just too large to fit down in there. All right, um, I'll turn you back in when we get there. This is what we're working on here. This is the coupler that they need to get off. Um, so there's a lock nut on the inside. I can do this with a socket, it looks like, but I don't have any on me right now, so it's just slow and steady with an open end wrench. I have a ratcheting wrench in my left hand, but there's not enough room for it to fit. reason why the prop shift should just I'm gonna have to put the nut back on it backwards and whack it on it right here to free it from this flange I think this is what has to happen thread stainless steel. Get that out of the way. Now because the prop is off, because it, it, it would make contact with the ground if it was between blades, I can go ahead and turn the whole thing like that so I can loosen this bad boy on the back. And that's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, gross! It is just transmission fluid and water. Just nasty. I really should have brought rags down here with me. All right, let me go ahead and get these nuts off of these off this thing, and we'll see if we can't pull this out. I'm a little more prepared. I brought a light. And a headlight, a headlamp, and a headlamp, and then uh, I also brought a three-jaw uh, puller because I can actually move the shaft back a little bit to get behind that flange to get these on there, and then hopefully um, with a little bit. Oh shit! I forgot to bring the torch up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put this puller on right now, and and put some ugga duggas to it and see if it comes out if it doesn't i might need to heat it up a little bit you gotta be careful there's no fuel down there um but there's a lot of oil from uh transmission fluid it doesn't really ignite like that but i just got to be very very careful so you know bring a fire extinguisher down there with me and see what i can do so let me get into position and see what we got going on all right so i have the puller on here and the nut back on there so if this does spring off it's not gonna fling off and hurt me look at all the transmission fluid and gross water and stuff <sighs> this is gonna be a, uh, this is gonna take a good cleaning all right so after i get this flange off i gotta get down there and loosen the pss um shaft um triple shaft um seal uh, because that's going to hold the shaft from trying to go back through and then this linkage has to come off and then I think that's it and then these bolts need to come out there's one two three four um, five or six and then before those bolts come off I got to get a jack underneath the bell housing to support the weight of the engine remove these two motor mounts from each side and then jack the engine up to bring the transmission up a little bit take those bolts out slide the transmission off lay it on its back in here redo the seal that's at the bottom 
and then pick it back up, slide it back on. Freaking nightmare. It's going to be very, very difficult. I'm probably going to get a shop vac down here and clean up this gross nastiness before I take the transmission off so that we're not playing in that stuff. But this is my first gig. I have to do this first. I might have to heat that. But I have to uh, get some tension on this. I need two hands. And then um, we'll see what we can do. I was hoping I was going to be able to get the impact gun in here, but I didn't realize that I was so close to the firewall or to the bulkhead. So, yeah, let me just uh, crank on this and see if we get any motion. It's really kind of easy. I, I, right, as soon as I stop filming there, I just tighten that up like one or two more turns, and I just gave it two taps with the three pound sledge just tap tap and boop it popped right off so that's good now i gotta finagle myself down in there to get to the uh, uh the shaft seal it's up against the transmission all right that's next timmy came down to help me i uh, got a little port of power on that back uh rudder because the rudder is bent a little bit and it was in the way of the shaft so we just pushed it out of the way far enough and I was able to pull the shaft out as far as we need to. And then we're going to go inside now, uh, take the linkage off and then unbolt. Well, we're going to jack up the, we're going to put a jack underneath the transmission, get the weight off and pull the back engine mounts off of it, uh, jack it up, uh, support the engine under the bell housing and then uh, undo the transmission, try to get it off. So let's get up in the boat and take care of that. Of the hole, uh, we put a uh, port of power underneath the transmission. Put a port of power underneath the transmission and uh, got the uh, lag bolts out of the motor mounts. And I just jacked up the motor about an inch. We're gonna, he's gonna shove some uh, boards underneath the, uh, the oil pan because it's cast, so we can. And uh, we're gonna set it back down on the oil pan and then support the transmission, unbolt it, slide it back. I think he's going to be able to flip it on its back and do the seal. If not, we're going to take, take it out of the hole. Right yeah, so, all right, we're going to take it out of the hole, and then uh, that's it. So we got we got some work to do. He found a super loose ground cable. I've been having issues with this boat, having uh, trouble starting. And, uh, and it's, that's for the computer and everything. Oh. So, so that might be the issue. So we're going to fix some stuff while we're down there. And, uh, I don't know, I'll get back to you here in a little bit when we get the uh, transmission loosened up. All right. Come right here. Okay. You ready? So, Timmy got all the bolts out of the transmission. I think there were six of them around. And uh, we have the bolt, we have the engine uh, propped up on blocks. The transmission has got a little space underneath it. And he's going to be able to take this whole thing and slide it right off the back of the engine. Let's go so Let's for see it. if he does it. There it goes. There we go. Sold. Look at that. No. All right, transmission's out. So now we got to get it up out of this hole here. We're going to put it on the up on the deck here. I'm going to shut the hatch. We're going to take it out of the back of the boat. But I need hands and we need a strap. So I'm going to go turn you off. But this is what we got. We left the mounts on. The yeah, left on. the mounts on so it's staying on the stringer. It slid back right where we need it to go. And uh, we're going to get it out of here. So let me turn you back on when we get out of the hole. It's facing at it. Okay, so transmission's out. Timmy says if it weighs 50 pounds, it's heavy. I'm sure it weighs more. He's just he's just beefy. But it came out. We just uh, Transmission hoses had to come off. Left the uh, mounts back on the transmission so you don't have to make any adjustments, even though we're going to. And uh, we're going to get a strap on it. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold that, and uh, he's going to finagle it. We'll pull it up out of the hole. And then we'll get it on the tailgate and see what we got. All right, there she is. She's out. She's up here. A little gross. A little gross. All right. I'm gonna, we'll go take a look, better look at it. All right, so while well, Timmy's pulling the transmission out, and I'm just kind of standing here doing nothing, feeding everybody drinks and whatever. Here's Kimmy on her birthday. Wish her happy birthday, everyone. Wish her happy birthday. Painting the boat. She's doing all the bottom paint right now. Doing a good job, too. Real good job. I'm going to go ahead and take this transmission home. I'm going to pull. I already pulled the seal out of it. Got the numbers off it. 
so this seal here is the one that's bad so i'm gonna get two seals because timmy noticed that on the output shaft here i got a groove and that's what happens when this boat was actually there's water right here and that's probably what got rid of the, you know made the seal bad and then i got you know rust and stuff made a groove there so what we're going to do is we're going to do two seals half this half the width one backwards one forwards so one will keep oil from coming out and one will keep water from going in uh, there's a little trick that the the bearing guy that we buy stuff from suggested so i'll get two seals for here that one's not leaking at all but i'm going to pull that um coupler off and pull that seal out and get another one for there Everything else looks great, sounds good. So I'm gonna get the seals tomorrow, put them back in, and then hopefully Timmy can just go ahead and boop, it's Timmy over there. He's gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna put the seals back in and we're gonna lug this thing back up in the boat, stick it back in the hole. So, and then go boating. Hopefully um, I'll go in sometime early in the week, next week. You stop it, that's what we need. Okay, you ready? We need. Way easier. <laughs> Way easier. Told you. Yeah. Picking sucks. Yeah. Letting down is easy. Alright. Sorry I didn't show the uh, installation of the transmission. It was uh, frustrating for Tim to be in there uh, lugging that thing around. He didn't want to, want to be recorded yelling and not yelling. He was just uh, he was just frustrated. So there's some swearing and you know, whatever, but uh, he, uh, lo and behold, got that thing down on the stringer, slid it forward. Um, I had uh, just moved the prop shaft around a little bit, and then he, it just uh, it slid on, and uh, it, you know, it went on, it went on fairly easy. Um, you know, it's just heavy and awkward, and he just didn't want to be filmed. So I left that out of there, but uh, he uh, bolted it all back up, hooked it all up, took the jacks out, and uh, put the motor mounts back on, and here I am installing the prop. on my uh, prop shafts uh, I put that one on two years ago actually this is the third fourth summer this is the fourth summer I'll be having on so it's been in there for for uh, three summers and I haven't gotten any wear on that um, so I guess I don't have any really straight current in and around my boat so but I'm gonna just for preventative I'm gonna put them on the shafts I got some for the rudders, but the drill that I've got is way too dull to go through there, so I'm going to have to re revisit that one before I put it in. And, but for now, I'm just going to put them on the... done the past couple of days and I haven't been filming it because it's obvious it's just been frustrating up and down and just everything kind of just not going the way I planned like look at this hatch 
how slow that's going up. I bought a new actuator, and in the pictures and then the the um, the numbers, it was supposed to be the same as my old one. When I got it, it's pencil thin. It's just this little tiny thing, but it's rated for you know 900 pounds or whatever it is, thousand pounds. Same rating, but little tiny motor and little tiny deal, so it just takes forever to go up. So I ordered a new one, a different one, and it came in, and I put it in there, and it was one inch too long, so the hatch wouldn't close all the way. I could modify it by moving the bracket forward, but then I would run into the problem where it would maybe run into the exhaust. So I kind of wanted to go straight up and down like it is now. So I emailed the company to see if they'll if they have another one that's a inch shorter or, or it, maybe even a couple inches shorter. It just it doesn't need to go up as far as you know it was before. It's almost vertical. Um, so that was one of the issues. The other issue I had was. Um, Last year, I don't know if, um, I think I put a video out there, the, um, the uh, computer went on this, on this engine, the starboard engine, and, oh, what is that, oh, it's the table, uh, the computer went on the engine, and what I mean by that is, is I went to go fire up the engine one day, and I didn't get the alarm, the alarm that I get, this is, this is the alarm right here to tell you that the fuel pump is on and it's a loud beep uh, there's a beep in the dashboard to tell you when the ignition's on and then there's a louder beep down here to tell you when the fuel pump's on that didn't happen last year so I ended up taking the computer off and I sent it into a guy in California and he called me back and told me this was a common occurrence on these ones I'm not sure if it's true or not just be blowing smoke I have no idea but it says a common occurrence on these ones that the fuel pump part of that computer tends to blow out on them and what he suggested that I do is run a wire from my fuel pump right to my key uh, key ignition so when you turn the key to the on position you can hear the fuel pump go on just you know turn the key to two seconds or whatever and then just start the boat if you leave the key on for 11 seconds uh, it reaches rail pressure on the uh, on the fuel rail and the pump will shut off so you know that was simple one wire because I just left them I left the negative I left the negative wire connected right to the harness like this is the harness for it comes out of the fuel pump and it goes into this um, plug and then the the red and the black wire go down the red goes over to the to here or you know into the in the fuse box first and then over there and then the black wire goes to ground so all I did was tap into the red wire with a waterproof connection and I ran the red and it has to go up to the to the key switch well, the problem that I had was getting the wire from that from the dashboard down and then over to here when I took apart the dashboard I had the white wire that goes up to my antenna and it's down here you can't see it back there it was down there it's all the way back there so what I did was I unhooked the end of it I hooked the wire to it and I pulled the wire through and I got the wire out here it's perfect so then what I want to do is before I went any further pull everything back through that direction and then hook up like a piece of paracord or whatever to, to have a guide rope in here for future issues well my dumbass, I pulled the wire through, and somewhere in the middle here, it came undone, and the white wire came out, and the red wire was gone, or it was in there, so I pulled it out, so now I lost my connection from the dashboard to here. So yesterday, uh, me and Kim were down here all day trying to figure out what to do. I was going to take the headboard, or the, um, the headliner off under here is the aft cabin. I was going to take the headliner off because there's access behind to this wall from that headliner. And I tried to get the headliner off. The screws came out, but the thing is glued on there. So it was impossible to get off. So then what I ended up trying to do is we ran a piece of, I had a piece of um, like a plow stake, like a, a, a big orange plow stake. And I ran it through uh, an access hole where the wires were. And ran it up to here under the dashboard um, it's actually where the wires come out is pretty much behind the throttles here 
Um, there's a grommet on the on the wall here, and all the wiring harnesses come out here, the throttle cables, the gear shift cables, all that. So I tried to follow that up along the wall so that Kim might be able to see it, you know, in that hole and be able to grab it with something. Well, I got the I got it up all the way there, and you can kind of see it. Well, you can kind of see wires moving behind the wall. She's reaching back there with a coat hanger, trying to pull it, and I mean, it was just a nightmare. So, we scrapped that idea. The headliner didn't work, so what I was going to do, I was going to drill like a like a five inch hole, six inch hole in the headliner, um, you know, cut the vinyl out of the way, move that out of the way, drill a hole in the plywood, and then go get like an access panel, one of those screw on ones, and then screw that to it. And that, that way we can, you reach your hand up in there, you could probably get to this area, I reach your hand this way and get to that area, so if I can whatever well um i can't fit up on that shelf to do the drilling above my head uh kim could and she would have done it but she was nervous and i i, I didn't blame her i was like you know i didn't want to i didn't want to start drilling holes in the in the um ceiling of the boat in the in the end so what i ended up doing which is pretty cool and i think i might have been kim's idea she says it was mine but i don't i don't think i came up with it. i think she did i took this plate off and behind this plate, I drilled a two-inch hole uh, through this um, this piece of fiberglass, and then there's another another piece about that far inside of it, just another piece. So I drilled a hole in there, and then once I drilled a hole in there, I could see the wires that run through. I could see them all. So then what I did was I ran the plow stake. I took this bin out here, this this part out here. I ran the plow stake along there. And I think the second time I did it, she just screamed out, I found it. And uh, it was about, you know, four inches, five inches away from here. But she was able to reach it with a piece of coat hanger with a hook on it and pull the, pull the stick over. And then she held onto it. And I came out of here and then I pulled it and I was able to bend it out of the hole and get it out of here. So it was just sticking out here and sticking out back there. So we were great. That was perfect. So then I tied a piece, or I, I taped a piece of uh, wire to it, and I pulled everything back through. So now I had the piece of wire going down, out there, and then sticking out the hole. So then my next gig was, I took a, that piece of coat hanger, it was about a foot long, and I put a little put a little curve on it like this, and I, and I brought it in the hole like this, and as it went in, it curved, and it just scratched along the inside of this wall. I can feel it making contact with the wall. And then when this all the dashboard was out, all of a sudden it just boop, it popped out the hole and she grabbed a hold of it so that was perfect so then on this end of it i tied the other end of that red wire and then she brought it through so now i had you know six seven feet of red wire hank spooled up there and six or seven feet of red wire spooled up there so now i had a piece of chase wire going through and the only reason i used the wire because i didn't have a piece of paracord i'm gonna go get that tomorrow and uh and pull it through but with that wire i was able to bring this back through this is this is the antenna wire and then i was able to bring another wire from the fuel pump back up to the key switch i would have put that on film or on the camera but like i said it was really stressful we're running back and forth uh, i'm getting aggravated you know it was just it was a nightmare so i just didn't have the camera on i just i just left it alone so i apologize for not filming that but uh in hindsight it probably would have been pretty cool to see that that disaster happen but with all that being said, I now have, um, this motor runs, I fire, fired it off real quick. That motor runs, uh, I'm out of, I don't have any, uh, transmission fluid in the trans, well, I have, you know, a couple quarts, but it's, it's low, so I gotta fill that back up after putting that back in, but now what I'm gonna do is go put the impeller in, uh, and I'll show you how I do it on this boat, so let me go get the impeller and get some stuff, and I'll be right back. You saw earlier I had this, this off, so everything's loose. I don't have anything tight on here. And the bracket isn't holding it on, so I just got to get it off here real quick, and then we will put the new one in.
just to confirm, I want to make sure that the splines match up, and they do, so that's good. And it did have the same amount of uh, fins as the old one, and it basically it looked like the same size. My other ones are, you know, they're all folded over like crazy, so it's hard to measure. But there was no uh, part number on the other one. This one has a part number. Well, it said one two ten at one two one zero. I don't know if that's the part number or whatever. But the way that I load these is with a little bit of uh, Dawn dish soap. Uh, it doesn't have any petroleum in it, so it won't it won't make the rubber swell. Um, you know, like if you use any petroleum based anything, you guys know if you put that on gaskets like in carburetor or stuff like that, um, they get they get uh, they swell up. So I just put a little uh, bit of Dawn soap on here, and everybody's all concerned about the way the fins are bent over when you load them. It doesn't really matter because the hole that goes into is kind of uh, off center. So one side of the uh, impeller, the fin is almost straight up and down, while the other side will be folded right over. And that's, you know, because it scoops it, scoops the water out and sends it through. So it doesn't matter if your fins are, when you load it, if your fins are bent this way or this way. As soon as the motor starts, they'll all, they'll all flip over the right way. As soon as they get down to the low area, they'll flip over the right way. So don't be too concerned about the way that you load it. Um, but I just like to, I don't know if you can see this. I just kind of get it all soapy and just kind of twist it in like that and it just goes right in and then it's spline so you gotta you gotta match up the spline and it's a lot easier with the hose not on it um, if I can't get this for some reason I can't get this on I'll, I'll take the hose off but um, if you can if you can just turn it enough to, to meet up with the spline And you don't have to worry about it. And I'm having a problem. There. Oh, there it goes. Never mind. Okay. So that's just that easy. Um, like I said, if these hoses weren't on, you can just take this and just dial it and you know put it in any way you want. Um, since mine are on, it wanted to kink a little bit, you know, kind of keep out. So whatever I got it I get it figured out so that's as easy as it is to to put these impellers in and then it's just a bunch of eight millimeter bolts uh, that screw into this outer housing and then those other two bolts to hold the bracket to keep it from spinning yeah because as soon as this uh, this crank starts spinning over this spins with it so it'll, it'll fling around and you know it would it could possibly rip apart that bracket that's that I took out earlier is what keeps it from coming apart, and I'll put that on next. Let's just get these these little screws in here, and we'll go from there. We'll go around in a pattern like you know like you would do lug nuts on a car. You can kind of feel. You know, because these edges are machined and, and real tight tolerance, you can feel when when the screw bottoms or when the screw when the plates make full contact with each other, it's pretty obvious on the screw. So you just tighten up just a little snug, and that's good. All right, now this bracket here, whoever whoever owned the boat before me. Um, must have changed this before and they have two different size uh, bolts I don't think um, the threads are the same but the head is different so the way the way this thing works this little bracket here it's got this little rubber thing here that fits on here and goes in between the brass part of here the pump and then the bracket just bolts to the bottom of the block here and I think the top one not that it matters because I said they're the same thread but this one was the larger headed bolt one in that hole there and then the bottom one right here my last boat um, was the same uh, model as this boat well brand and, and uh, smaller model it was the 3300 
uh, Martinique, where this is the 3700 Martinique, and uh, it had 454 um, uh, Horizon motors in it. This has got the 496s or the 8.1 Volvo Penta motors in it. Um, the, the Horizons, the the, uh, the uh, pump was down in between the engine and the stringer right there. And it was really, really difficult to do. Especially if you're, like, if you're, if it's an emergency, if you're out in the water and it happens. It was really difficult to do. Not, not alone sitting in the marina. But it was a pain job. It was, it was tight and uh, hot and everything else. This is a breeze. I mean, everything is super accessible. And, uh, super accessible and real easy to do. Okay. That's it. That's changing that impeller on that motor. Very simple. And this one's even easier because it's out in the middle. This is up against, it's not hard, but it's, you know, the, the sight is a little bit different. But that's it. So, that impeller's changed. I'm going to go ahead and change this one out. This one's fine, but I'm going to change it out with a new one and keep the old one as a spare in case something happens. I have it, but I want two brand new impellers so that, uh, you know, they're equal. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and do this one off camera. I'll get back to you and we'll do something else.